Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna be talking about something, let's say, interesting that happened today. It is basically Bob Gicarillo calling out Fuad Abiyad for something that Fuad said in his podcast. Basically, Bob Gicarillo made a almost 18 minute long video, and he titled it, Bob Gicarillo calls out Fuad Abiyad, and he puts, be a man, bro, in quotes. So this is his channel, this is the video that he made and he posted. It was posted like 10 hours ago and it doesn't have that many views, less than 3000. If you guys happen to not know who Bob Chick actually is, he was a professional bodybuilder, but you are more likely to know him as the MC from the bigger shows like Arnold Classic, the Mr. Olympia. Sometimes he commentates the shows, but mainly he's MCing. And he's friends with uh, Sean Ray. Both of these guys were very outspoken during the 90s and both of them somehow managed to get into the IBB. Up until recently, Sean Ray was commentating the Arnold Classic. This year, it's Fuad Abiyad who did this job, so that's probably a part of the reason why Bob Chicarillo is mad at Fuad. Anyways, let me get back to the point. How this whole thing started was by Fuad Abiyad talking about the athlete's rep. The one person that is representing the athletes, the bodybuilders, that bodybuilders could talk to and ask for something to be changed, if it needs to be changed. And apparently, if you guys didn't know, Bob Chicarillo is the athlete's rep. Anyways, let's start this video by showing you what Fuad had to say about the athlete's rep. I wish they had an actual athlete's rep. I think they, they have an in-name athlete's rep that doesn't do anything for the athletes. We need a voice, an actual so, voice. Yeah, I wish there was one person that the athletes could go to and actually have a representative that wasn't closer to the IFBB than he was to the athletes. Yeah. Sometimes athletes want things like... Well, they want a black backdrop at all the shows. Yep. Or they want, let's try and find a lighting production that can do all the shows. So that same the light, light. So that the shows are all lit the same. You should do that. No. no. I would love to do that. All right. So basically what Fuad said is that IFBB actually has an athlete's rep. And he knows probably who it is. In case you guys didn't know. Yeah, that's Bob Chick. I didn't know. I don't compete in MPC or IFBB Pro League. So why would I know? And I'm sure many of you guys don't know either. And he's not very active on social media. What does he do? I don't even know. But uh, he didn't know. And uh, apparently Fuad did, you know, because he says IFBB has an athlete's rep who does nothing, who is close to IFBB. And he would like uh, the athletes to have somebody who is closer to them who can go to the IABB and ask for things to be changed. He made two points and both of them were very good. First of all, he says that the athletes might want a full black backdrop. The other one, which was very, very important one, is good lighting, the same lighting every time. Why is this so hard to do? Why is it so impossible? I have no idea, but imagine how cool would that be? Here is an example of the 2010 Arnold Classic compared to last year's Mr. Olympia background. And I mean, this is the Olympia. This is the best show in the world. Other shows have much more colorful backgrounds, uh, so many different sponsors. And, you know, it is distracting. It's definitely distracting. It's not the best way to present the physiques, which bodybuilding show should be all about. It simply makes sense. I understand that they're making money, I mean, this is a business after all, by promoting all the sponsors, putting them in the background, uh, maybe they're gonna start putting them on, on bodybuilders' trunks, I wouldn't be too surprised. I understand that from the money perspective, having the LED screen behind uh, the bodybuilders instead of a black drape, it makes sense. It's much more expensive to invest in that, but I guess it pays out in the end. But really, what it does, it, it defeats the purpose of freaking bodybuilding shows. Shouldn't bodybuilding shows be all about the physiques? What is the point of doing something that, you know, is not gonna represent the physiques in the best light possible? And look at it here, with the black drapes. It looks so perfect. This is it. This is all it should be. And the lighting, if it could be like it is here, for example, that would be it. And to the other point that Ford says, find one production that does the lighting and, you know, make a contract with them. Let them do every show. And if the lighting would be the same as it is here, it would be perfect. There is so many shows where the lighting was horrible. I mean, look at this. 2020 California Pro. Look at the backdrop. Look at the, the lighting. Look at the reflectors that are below. I mean, in, in the front of the feet of the athletes. Reflecting on them from below. I don't know, man. I mean, I think in bodybuilding, in IIBB Pro League, at the highest level of bodybuilding competition, the lighting and backgrounds should be consistent. 
the judges can change around, of course, but some things need to have the consistency. So I agree with Ford with these two points for sure. But here's what Bob Chicarillo has to say about this. First of all, if you're going to refer to me, refer to me by name. You, you know who I am, right? So why do you sit there and say things like, oh, well, we have an athlete's rep uh, in name only, but like you don't know who it is, right? You know, quit acting stupid, man. I mean, it doesn't make you look any smarter or better. Uh, you seem to have some issues with what I've done or not done since you don't know anything that I've done over the last 15 years, 20 or whatever it's been. Listen, I give you a whole list of stuff I've done, all right? Uh, I actually put together a meeting to see if there was a, a opportunity to do a, an association, a union, again, whatever you want to call it. To this day, we still don't have one. So if you guys want to watch the whole thing, you can watch it on his channel. It's 18 minutes long, but I'm going to cut to the most important parts of this video. So first, he starts by saying what he has done as a athlete's rep. And really, it's a short list. If you watch the video, you're going to hear. He says he tried to create a union. He didn't do that. He didn't manage. Uh, he also says that uh, he somehow managed to get the assurance for the athletes. It lasted for a little while, but it stopped. And also he says that he was always trying to get more money to the bodybuilders. He didn't really go into details with that. The next thing that he said that he has done, which is something I didn't know about either, is that he basically created 212 bikini and women's physique division. Check this out. I've also put in three divisions. You may have heard of them. One of them is called the 212. I also put in a division called bikini. You may have heard of that one too. Uh, and women's physique. Well, guess who came up with that one? Me. I honestly had no idea about this, but if he did that, good job. Now I'm gonna play you a couple of more interesting parts where he talks about Fuad's ideas. Aside from lighting and the backdrop, uh, Fuad also mentioned that it would be maybe good to have the same judges every show, but immediately after he said that, he also said that he doesn't think that's the best idea. And the other, the other guys at the podcast also said the same thing. So he changed his mind about that as soon as he said it. But Bob here takes like seven minutes to talk about how this is a bad idea. Now let's hear what he has to say about the lighting and the backdrop. I am here to tell you that at any point you could have came to me with any of these ideas. Unfortunately, a couple of the ideas that you actually said out loud... Um, I got to be honest, if, if I just put you in place as the athlete's rep and uh, uh, sent you in there for a meeting with the Pro League with uh, Jim Mannion and Big Steve and Sandy and Gary and all the rest of the, the brass and, and Tyler, right? Uh, and you came up with these ideas. They would literally laugh you out of the out of the meeting room. You want a black backdrop at all the shows. Do you have any idea how impossible that would be for many reasons? So you, so you want everybody to just put a, just a black curtain on stage, right? Separate from the backdrop or the $10,000 LED screen that they're using or, uh, you know, the, the backdrop they spend thousands of dollars for. At some point, you just want to kind of just, you know, have the boys set up a, a little uh, curtain on there, right? You know, just for the, for the bodybuilding? Do we keep it there for the whole show? It's an extra cost, right? I'm sure you haven't thought of that either, but... All right, so you heard what he had to say about the black backdrop, but he didn't really explain why is it really such a bad idea. I mean, he talks about the LED screen that is $10,000 or however much. And I don't know if I understood him correctly, but you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I think he said that it is more expensive to have the black drape behind the athletes uh, for the entirety of the show than it is to put a LED screen behind them that is $10,000 or a couple of thousand dollars. Did he really just say that? It doesn't make any sense. But if anything, he made me laugh when he, when he started addressing this, this, uh, this topic. Uh, let me show you again. You want a black backdrop at all the shows. Yeah, yeah, that's what we all want. The athletes, the, the, the fans, everybody, except maybe the promoters, who are making a lot of money from the sponsors, but they are distracting us from looking at the physiques. Now let's move on to the next uh, question about uh, the lighting. This one made more sense. He actually said some valid points. I didn't know about this, of course. How would I? I'm not a show promoter. By the way, look at Flex's biceps. Aren't they a little sus to you? <laughs> anyway, this is a photo from Iron Man, which was known for having the best lighting ever. And Bob is going to address that show in particular as well. So let me show you this part about the lighting. Um, the same lighting it shows. I, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Like, seriously? You want the same guy to do the same lighting at every show. Every show should have the same lighting. You couldn't have the same lighting at every show for a for hundred reasons, but I'll just give you a couple. Every venue is different. 
Theater lighting is different than, than uh, lighting in an open expo that you have to bring in outside lighting and set it up, okay? Air, space, all makes a difference. Existing lighting, ambient lighting. There's a guy named John Balick, okay, who was a pretty big deal back in the day. And they had a show called The Iron Man Pro. And for 10 years, it was regarded as having the best lighting of any show ever anywhere. When the show moved out of where they were, out of the theater type setting, and into the expo, John Balick, they once again put together to put the lighting together. Well, guess what? The lighting was never the same. Do you know why? Different place. Same guy, put the same lighting on, right? Knew everything, knew all the, the, the tricks of the trade. And the lighting was never the same as, in the, as it was in the same place. All right? There's places that come with the lighting. All right? It comes with the package. You got to pay for that. All right. If it's in an auditorium type setting, that's different. If it's in an expo, you got to bring it all in separately. All right, so he made some pretty valid points as far as lighting. By the way, look at this 2009 Olympia lighting. It looked like these guys were using Dream Tan, you know, the, the golden color that usually Indians are using. Maybe they did, I don't know, but I don't think so. I think it was banned from the IBB. I'm not sure when exactly, which year, but I think it was a long time ago. Pro 10 is the only thing that you can use in IBB. But, you know, the lighting was good here. It was really good. Forget about the golden color. It was just a good lighting, you know, the shadow was falling properly, uh, the backdrop, again, the same color, black, it looks amazing. So, yeah, I mean, Fuad made some really good points, I mean, some really valid concerns that a lot of bodybuilding fans and athletes too are concerned about. And what Bob said, basically, as far as the backdrop, he didn't give us any explanation as to why is that so impossible, why everybody at the top would laugh at Fuad if he suggests something like this. I don't understand that, but as far as the lighting, okay, okay, he made some sense, but, you know, maybe it's not an easy fix, maybe it's not something that can be fixed in one day, but maybe if they worked on it, maybe they could figure it out, it's not really that tough, right? I mean, how difficult could it be, really? Anyways, if they wanted to do these things, they could change this, and if the athletes wanted this, and if they could talk to the athletes' rep... And if he actually stood for them and went and talked and suggested this and really fought for this to, to happen, to change, maybe it would happen. I would be happy if that happened. Maybe it would not go. I don't know. I'm not sure how it works over there. But it would be nice to try. I mean, Ben Chao in the podcast suggested that Fuad should take that job. That Fuad should be the athlete's rep. And Fuad said he would love to be that. So that's also the reason why uh, why Bob Chicorillo was so fired up, why he was pretty pretty rude and offensive towards uh, Fuad, why he was so sarcastic, and uh, you can watch the whole video, you're gonna see what, what else he had to say about Fuad and about the whole situation. So guys, uh, if you wanna check the whole video out, go to Bob Chicorillo's YouTube channel. The name of his channel is Voice of Bodybuilding. And make sure to tell me, guys, what do you think about these uh, points that Fuad made? And what do you think about Bob Chicarillo and what he has done for the athletes? Is he really the best choice for the athletes' rap or should it be Fuad from now on? Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you have time, check out the Old School Labs website. Uh, you're gonna find the link in the description of this video. And if you use the code DIVON, you're gonna get a 12% discount. You have a lot of great supplements over there. I will definitely suggest you try Vintage Brawn. A beef isolate, whey isolate and egg white protein. Amazingly tasting one. So if you guys wanna support me and my channel, you can do that by trying this uh, whey protein. So guys, once again, thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.